Hello, hello, hello! Welcome to our Paper Paper Friday. My name is Chef Anna from Floria Cakes. I'm a pastry chef and wedding cake designer. So uh, this is our new series, Paper Paper Friday. And for the next six weeks, every Friday at 11 a.m., I'm going to go live here on Instagram to introduce you to vapor paper and working with vapor paper and answer all of your questions about uh, how to start making vapor paper flowers i'm a vapor paper lover see i have a few of my flowers here and in the next six weeks i'm going to teach you step by step how to get started with vapor paper because i truly believe that vapor paper flowers are is the way to go and uh, wedding cakes especially wedding cakes uh, or celebrational cakes but wafer paper flowers are always get so much attention because it's edible it's so much easier to work with compared to gum paste and especially if you're a home baker and we have a lot of home bakers in our community sometimes we don't have enough time to make flowers in one sitting like we're sitting down when you're working with gum paste or flower paste and you're trying to make a flower sometimes we just don't have enough time to work on that and the beauty of working with wafer paper and making wafer paper flowers that you can split this process and like few different days or even weeks or months because you can pick up your petals on one day then condition them on the second day like uh, an assembly of flowers on the first day so you don't have to do everything at the same time compared to working with the sugar paste and today our first conversation out of this series paper paper friday we are going to talk about all the and i talk a lot with my hands <laughs> we are going to talk about all the different types of paper paper where to buy one how to save money when you're buying paper paper and why uh which type or grade of paper paper i prefer for what purposes so i have a few props here and i've been playing with different types of paper paper since 2016 i think i made my first cake with the paper paper in 2016 and since 2020 i teach how to make paper paper flowers for wedding cakes specifically so let me know where you're watching me from i live in south carolina i am a home baker here because i'm certified under cottage food law and i make wedding cakes and i teach how to make uh or wedding cakes with wafer paper flowers. So, welcome, 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 welcome. I see a lot of familiar faces. So for the next six weeks, we are going to meet here on Instagram every Friday at 11 a.m. New York time for our wafer paper Fridays. I see Indonesia, South Texas, Arizona, and North Carolina. Hello, friends. Hello, Amanda. Hello, Amanda is from uh, Canada. And another person joined us from Canada. Italy, Germany, perfect. Australia. Oh, it's probably too late in Australia. It's 11 a.m. here in South Carolina. And it's Friday, so we're going to have fun. Ireland, LA. Okay, if you never worked with me for paper, um, you are here for a treat. Because wafer paper, first of all, it's very inexpensive to buy. You can purchase your wafer paper of Amazon, doesn't matter if you live in Europe or you live in the States or you live anywhere in the world. Wafer paper is getting more popular, so it's available almost everywhere. And you can purchase different types of wafer paper. The only thing you can buy, as far as I know, as far as my research goes, that first type of paper paper, which called, I call it zero grade or all grade paper paper. This is the thinnest paper paper. So this one is 0 0.22 millimeters. And the only brand by 0 0.22 millimeters of paper paper I found by the brand Oasis Supply. So you can purchase Oasis Supply wafer paper off Amazon. At least that's what I do. And we'll talk about all the ways to store your wafer paper and to keep it fresh. But the zero 
0.22 millimeters B4B for uh, brand is Oasis Supply you can purchase on Amazon. This is my preferred type of paper paper to work with when I'm making flowers. So especially for flowers, something like the flowers that uh, these David Austin Rose from my paper paper academy, and something like this butterfly on Uncle's is also from my paper paper academy. And these are like this paper paper is so thin and beautiful, and I prefer if you can get your hands on this type of paper paper. 0 0.22 um, first of all it's uh, uh, most uh, it's the thinnest so why I prefer to work with 0 0.22 when I'm making flowers because when you make commercial style flowers and you need to make a lot of flowers or you make a flower that has like a lot of different petals like something like this uh, you can condition your V for paper only on one side so it goes a little bit faster when you're making flowers that's the biggest difference between working with other types of V for paper and 0 0.22 so if you can find this this is the way to go when you wanted to make realistic flowers so like very soft textured flowers with a lot of petals because you will work faster because you only need to condition this paper paper on one side if you're making the white flowers so like lighter colored flowers if you wanted to have a brighter color or like bolder color maybe dark pink or red you still need to condition or color your wafer paper on both sides so it doesn't matter much whether you're using 0 0.22 or you're using a different type of wafer paper so the second side is 0 0.27 and any wafer paper from 0 0.27 to about like 0 0.35 millimeters wafer paper, they all of them are 80 grade, premium grade, just like regular wafer paper, all of them falls into this category. Uh, this is the most available, like this type of wafer paper is available everywhere, I think. And uh, I work with Saracina for this brand. Sometimes, okay, so one sheet, I see a comment that one sheet of searching a day for paper cost, cost about a euro. If you're going to buy a pack of 100 uh, sheets of wafer paper it will last you a long time like way longer but out of one sheet of wafer paper you can make more than one flower so you can make like depends on the type of flower but you can make a whole arrangement out of like three sheets of wafer paper if you're going to work with gum paste or any other materials it will cost you more in terms of all the other types uh, or tools you would need to buy to do that so I prefer to, for this type, I either work with search in the wafer paper or IC Supply also have uh, 0 0.27 millimeter wafer paper, which is called, I believe it's called premium wafer paper. You can buy it off Amazon. So here, OIC Supply wafer paper for a pack of 100 sheets is about $26, I believe, last time I checked. So if you're buying like 100 sheets of wafer paper for $26, it's nothing because it, it, will, it is going to last you like a lifetime. I go through a lot of wafer paper because I teach, because I use it a lot, and because I have uh, I sell wafer paper pedal kits, so I go through a lot of wafer paper. But my first pack of wafer paper lasted me few years because I was only using that for my clients. I wasn't teaching, I wasn't doing anything else, just making cakes with wafer paper. So in terms of pricing compared to fondant, because fondant went on price, it's how much fondant costs is ridiculous. It's just like it's so expensive. Everything got very expensive. And with wafer paper you can use if you cover your cakes in uh, white chocolate ganache or like light colored ganache and you can attach wafer paper strictly to your ganache cake so you can skip on using sugar paste or fondant to save a little bit more money because everything is going to get even more expensive so learning how to work with wafer paper and manipulating your petals you can make a lot of flowers out of one sheet of wafer paper and for a whole arrangement like our uh, David Austin roses like these rows, uh, you can see it's almost like the size of my face. This rows only takes two sheets of wafer paper. I create all my templates inside my wafer paper academy. They are created very intentionally. 
so you can cut as many petals like as much petals as possible and all my petals are accounted to using as little wig for paper as possible so our butterfly ranunculuses are like five flowers out of one sheet of wig for paper or for our regular like a uh, huge those beautiful ranunculuses two sheets of paper paper for one flower so you can make a whole arrangement out of like 10 sheets of fake for paper so it's not that expensive if you learn how to properly use your fake for paper and you can reuse all your scraps and in terms of timeline you can work for way longer using fake for paper compared to sugar paste so for something like this you only need two sheets of fake for paper and for like uh, our sweet piece you can make this whole arrangement out of one sheet of fake for paper if you use how to properly scale your templates and put them onto your paper paper so i have all my beautiful flowers here so i prefer for something like 0.27 millimeters to 0.35 millimeters any brand i have icing images here uh, I have Saracina, I have um, Oasis Supply Wafer Paper, all of them are the same. The only ingredient I would uh, ask you to consider or pay attention to is whether your wafer paper contains any sugar. Preferably work with wafer paper that only has uh, potato starch, oil and water. And searching the wafer paper has olive oil, so sometimes it gets a little bit smelly. And as a supply, they use some sort of vegetable oil. So the preferred type of wafer paper is the one that has only a potato starch, oil, and water, because something like icing images wafer paper, they contain different flavoring and they have uh, sugar. Uh, as one of the ingredients if you're making flowers it doesn't matter it's like it's not a big difference but if you're going to make any like architectural shapes or lace or you wanted to make my fried lace like crinoline lace using beef or paper that contains any sugar it might stick to your pants so if you're having any issues with that look for a cleaner beef or paper and usually less ingredients the cheaper it's going to be so either my preferred types for 0.27 it's either Saracina or Oasis Supply and that's what is available for me here. If you're in the States, uh, Saracina is sold by Sweet, Sweet Chalet Shop in Orlando and all for you cakes in Texas. If you wanted to try Saracina Week for people, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. I pay my own money. I buy my week for people of Amazon like everyone does. So it's <laughs> just like uh, my suggestions are purely based on my experience. I worked with every single brand of wafer paper. I tried all of them and my preferred two types to brands is Oasis Supply and Saracina. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. So for 0.27 millimeters wafer paper, this is the one it's kind of like my go-to type of wafer paper for everything. So if I'm making any architectural shapes with my wafer paper, if I'm making some sort of like these types of flowers and we are going to make them live not the next week, the week after that. So this is going to be a live demonstration for our week for paper Friday. Every Friday, 11 a.m. here on Instagram, I'm going to go live and teach you how to make beautiful things using paper paper. And 0.27 millimeters paper paper is my favorite when I'm making something like this. You can see how dimensional and textural and this type of uh, decorations is my go-to for everything so these type of decorations I use on all my wedding cakes and we might make it live as well so we might have another tutorial live how to make this type of decorations using the paper, paper how to color how to shape how to do all of other things but basically 0 0.27 my also my sweet piece these are 0 0.27 delphinium flower these ones are 0 0.27 because i use the same craft punch for these delphinium flowers as i used for these decorations and we're going to talk about like all the different ways to cut paper paper as well so the other type the third type of paper paper is 0 0.60 or dd grade or double thickness wafer paper and it's thick so it's also called uh, wafer paper cardstock and it's just like it's thick you can see like 0 0.27 
it's very flexible it's still flexible but this one is just like it's not going to bend and 0.22 is way softer so this is 0.22 this is 0.27 you can see it bends but it still doesn't bend is the same as 0.22 and 0.60 is not even moving anywhere so for 0.22 and 0.27 millimeters weight for a paper it has two sides so this side is kind of like bumpy side on both of them and the other side is shiny side or smooth side and uh, 0.22 to around like 0.40 millimeters wafer paper is called single thickness wafer paper so it's only have texture on one side and a smooth on the other side double thickness wafer paper or 0.60 millimeters wafer paper is smooth on both sides it doesn't have any texture or any sides and I've been struggling with this 0.60 millimeters wafer paper because first of all I have a lot of different types of wafer paper and I couldn't come up with an idea how to use it or what to use it for and yesterday I finally figured it out I finally figured out a way how to use the 0.60 millimeters wafer paper and make ruffles so this is not fondant this is wafer paper and imagine this being on a cake with maybe like a string of pearls and this is so much easier to make out of uh, wafer paper compared to gum paste or sugar paste so this is the way i played with wafer paper yesterday so i'm going to show you how to do that let's start with that so i have my 0.60 millimeters wafer paper in case you have it and you have no idea how to use it like what to use it for uh, i came up with this idea to make ruffles out of paper paper this is 0.16 and what i'm going to do is to roughly tear it apart and if you wanted to have a straight line for your ruffles you can do that as well but basically i like the idea of kind of like a lacy look or something uh, similar to fabric so I just roughly tore my wafer paper apart and then what I did yesterday is I used water, nothing else. You can use wafer paper conditioner, I use water, uh, let me grab a little, little bottle with water. So it, this is just a mini spray of water and the thing is when you're playing with wafer paper, like especially double thickness wafer paper, is to be um, generous with water but generous but mindful if it makes any sense so i just sprayed my wafer paper and i was i was in my kitchen and i have and i played with that so i sprayed my wafer paper with water my hands are clean and i was in my kitchen and i have like a spray bottle when i'm baking bread to add like steam and moisture so i was in my kitchen like playing with wafer paper and i just sprayed it with water and it worked so i sprayed my wafer paper with water on both sides and it becomes very sticky but because this wafer paper this is double thickness so 0 0.16 so it's double thickness wafer paper and i spray it with water relatively generous so it becomes like almost like a fabric like texture and it's similar to thinly rolled fondant or gum paste if you're making any ruffles on your cakes i need a little bit more water on this corner uh, if you're making ruffles for your cake, so you wanted to make any types of decorations and you wanted to save time because like rolling fondant or 50-50 or gum paste, it just it takes forever, especially if you wanted to make it very thin. So maybe try using 0 0.60 uh, wafer paper. So then what I did is I just scrunched that all together and you can see it's sticky, so it sticks to itself and it's very pliable and it dries relatively quickly but you still have time to play with that and to attach this to your cake so now i have this beautiful ruffle and if you wanted to you can fold it in half and like use it as a ruffle on your cake so now you can easily attach this to your cake and have it like as a uh, horizontal ruffle like this or you can put it on the side you can create different textures with that i just pleated it and i like it how it looks like 
it looks like fabric it clearly looks like fabric even though it's 060 millimeters for paper and I play it with different types and when it dried it dried like in maybe 10-15 minutes so you can see it's really dry so you can prepare something like this in advance and then use either a little bit of water on the back side or you can use uh, piping gel or if you're attaching this to buttercream you can just stick it to your buttercream cake like this and let me grab a small cake so I'll show you I'll show you what I mean so if you're working on a cake and then you can stick it like this you can see how beautiful it looks like uh, decorations or for something like this it sticks it sticks on its own with a little bit of water and then you can have like beautiful textural ruffles on the side of your cake if you wanted to add lace to that it looks very very dimensional and you we didn't spend any time on rolling out or big for paper or gum paste and uh, into thin sheets. So this is 0 0.60. And same if you wanted to do just single layer with a straight edge of big for paper, I would do the same. So and you can hear that this big for paper is very really dry because I've been sitting in my cupboard for <laughs> probably years and years and years so i'm going to spray it again on both sides and play with it in my hands until it's not melting but it's relatively it's like my hands are wet so you can see i applied enough moisture to that to wet this vapor paper and uh, i see a few questions for fixing ruffles on the cake we have to cover the cake with wafer paper no you don't have to you can use piping gel and use toothpicks to uh, make sure your wafer paper will stay in place and then when the pipe piping gel dries or like gelatinizes you can remove your uh, toothpicks and your wafer paper will stay in place so you can apply you can attach wafer paper ruffles or something like this to either fondant ganache uh, buttercream the only issue i had is with the um, cream cheese i tried placing wafer paper decorations on the cream cheese and it melted a few times so the only suggestions against placing wafer paper onto will be cream cheese uh, please pause this video so we can watch it again all my videos will be saved uh, here on instagram for our subscribers so yeah so you can see now i'm playing with my wafer paper again and maybe i'll try cutting this in half we'll see so now i have two pieces of wafer paper this is 0 0.16 so maybe if you wanted to make a uh, different type of ruffles without spending time on um, rolling your gum piece or rolling your fondant you can do this with wafer paper and it will give you all the texture you need so same for another piece of wafer paper and just like squish it together and i apply a very decent amount of moisture on my wafer paper to make it flexible so now I have this little, little beautiful things that I can place on my cake or like use as a different types of decorations. And you can see that it didn't have, it didn't take a long time for us to create. If you wanted to make them in advance, you can make them in advance and just put them on a like bumpy form or something to dry. And then it's so much easier to attach to your cakes as well. Uh, can you do the same thing with other sizes of wafer paper yes you can but you need to you have to be a little bit more mindful with that let's play with our 0 0.27 millimeters wafer paper because with 0 0.27 millimeters wafer paper so i have the same uh, type of wafer paper 0 0.27 you can see it's bumpy on one side and it's shiny on the other side if I'm going to spray my wafer paper with water, this is just water, and if I'm going to spray the same amount of water onto my wafer paper, 0.27 as I applied on 0.60, it is going to become a little bit too soft. You can use it for 
like making architectural shapes or ruffles or whatever you wanted to do but you can see it already starts to um, melt onto itself so it's folding it's like it's barely holding on it becomes too sticky and a little bit harder to work with so if you wanted to create the same type of decorations it's just it becomes too sticky if you wanted to create the same type of decorations with a different type of paper paper like 0 0.27 you have to be a little bit more mindful in terms of the amount of moisture you're applying so to do that and now you can see it just like it's folded on itself and I was very very careful with that so to do that instead of spraying your vapor paper with water you can use a little bit of steam this is a handheld mini steamer you can find that on my on Amazon storefront so you can find this on Amazon it's just like a rechargeable and it's cold so it's like it's it's very pleasant to work with when it's hot or when it's dry and your face is dry so this is just like a handheld mini steamer it's rechargeable and i use regular water just like drinking water and it disperses and you can play with that that's how i make a lot of my flowers with this handheld mini steamer it just like it takes a longer time you can uh, steam you can boil a pot of water if you wanted to add steam but for thinner types of paper paper still not enough my my what is my humidity my humidity is only 39 percent, so my room is very dry that's why it's taking forever to absorb the moisture but you can use like a kettle uh pot of water or you can use a larger steamer and if you live in uh, high humidity or it's not dry as it is right now here uh, it might take you a little bit less time for you if you wanted to shape your wafer paper and so uh, now you can shape and you can make different ruffles out of your wafer paper like different types of wafer paper but you can see this is 0 0.27 millimeters wafer paper but the ruffles made out of 0 0.27 millimeters wafer paper they do have their purpose and they just do not like the same so you can see this is 0 0.27 i had the same piece of wafer paper this is 0 0.27 and this is 0 0.60 with more moisture i think that for ruffles 0 0.60 looks a little bit more realistic if you wanted to get uh, this pendant or 50 50 look i prefer i would suggest you to uh, 0 point, to use 0 0.60 for that if you wanted to create a different types of decoration so for 0 0.27 I would do like a square maybe like a little square or triangular something like irregular shape and maybe add a little bit of moisture and then shape it a little bit differently like maybe pinch it together so I would create like these types of ruffles if you wanted to use 0 0.27 or 0 0.22 millimeters wafer paper because i find like this looks a little bit better with uh, thinner wafer paper and then you can create like put all of them together so 0 0.27 0 0.22 to 0 0.40 single thickness single thickness wafer paper is better for making thinner decorations to make in lace to make flowers to make architectural shapes to make something like this so you can see that these are just paper paper flowers and they are very easy to make we are going to make them live the front not the next friday the friday after that but if you have a stack of 0 0.60 millimeters wafer paper i played around and i found a way to use it just in case you need another idea how to use wafer paper so uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll get a sip of water and we'll talk about different ways how to cut your wafer paper. And don't forget to drink your water. I know, especially if you're baking and it's Friday, Friday, if you're working in the wedding cake industry, Friday <coughs> usually is the busiest day. Don't forget to stay hydrated. This is your goal for 2024. <coughs> stay hydrated. So, to cut my wafer paper, I prefer to use a pair of good scissors. <laughs> these are these are very old, but I'm not 
I wouldn't say I'm cheap. I'm not cheap. I'm frugal in terms of investing money into tools I'm not going to use because especially when I just started out making flowers with sugar flowers and everything, I bought so many tools. I bought all the colors for like cookies, flowers and everything and uh, whatever and I never use it so now I'm trying to be very mindful about all the tools I'm buying I see the questions can you airbrush coloring it yes you can uh, we are going to talk about different ways to color paper paper next Friday same paper paper Friday 11 a.m. here on Instagram live we are going to talk about different ways to color paper paper but yes you can airbrush paper paper and you can use just regular airbrush colors and that's what I prefer I prefer to use airbrush color with my paper paper conditioner which we are going to talk about next week as well so to cut your paper paper a pair of good of uh, good craft scissors these are from a scrapbooking aisle of the craft store and they are non-stick um obviously i'm not sponsored i would love to be sponsored by any companies but no one wants to sponsor me because i'm too opinionated for some companies and i share my opinion whether i like it or not so this is what i use in my business for like years and years and years a pair of good sharp scissors i prefer something like this like from a craft store because then my hand is not going to get very tired and I have a little bit more leverage. And to cut my wafer paper, I prefer to fold it like in three different layers and then I can cut a few petals at the same time. So usually I just cut like my petals roughly like this and I have a few petals at the same time and I cut my all my petals first, then I condition, then I do all the other things. The other options to cut your wafer paper, you can use a craft punch. There are plenty of different types of craft punch. Let me see if I have any here. Um, because I've been trying to stay organized. So uh, I use this brand. I have a lot of craft punches by this brand. They call EK Tools and um i like this brand because they are collapsible so you can like lock them and they don't have don't take a lot of time don't take a lot of space so for with the craft punch it is the same way you just punch your flowers out of paper paper and then you have beautiful little flowers they come in different sizes and i use them for my applique decorations for something like uh this delphinium flower i use craft punches to pre-cut my flowers the third method that i use when i work um when i make a lot of flowers is to use a cutting machine i have two cutting machines i have silhouette cameo 2 and silhouette uh, portrait i believe so i have two different types of cutting machines and uh, we have all these templates inside our victory paper academy if you wanted to use cutting machines for all the flowers we have inside our victory paper academy you will you can download all these templates and we have a tutorial how to use cutting machines with that as well so my preferred method scissors because it's always here i always use it craft punches for like smaller flowers or when i need to punch a lot of different flowers or if i need to punch lace sheets or something like very delicate and beautiful i use craft punches and cutting machines when you need to cut a lot but i would not advertise you to or suggest you to invest in a cutting machine uh, if you're not going to make a lot of flowers because there is nothing wrong with cutting machines it's just the whole process to set up a cutting machine to figure out all the settings and all of those things it takes me a whole day so if i know that i need to cut like thousand different petals i might clean my kitchen my kitchen island set up the cutting machine and cut all my petals and then put it in my cupboard and forget for that for another year it's just taking forever just the whole setting up process is taking forever for me and i'm i, I have master's degree in mechanical engineering so i'm technically i'm advanced but it's still it's like it's just taking forever so my preferred method is always a pair of scissors it's uh, if you are um, 
cutting like three layers of paper paper at the same time it doesn't take as much time as you think especially if you wanted to watch a movie or you wanted to call your mom or you wanted to gossip with your friend just use a pair of scissors to cut your wafer paper and if you wanted to make a lot of flowers yes then investing in a cutting machine makes more sense so i'm going back i saw a few questions did i miss them i wanted to answer them and um uh, so for making flour like peony, what grade is good? For making peonies, I would suggest 0.22 for all flowers. With um, if you can get your hands on 0.22, 0.22 goes for making all flowers which have more than like two petals, or like five petals. So everything that has a lot of petals, 0.22, because you will need to condition your petals only on one side, and it will save you a lot of time. For everything like texture, architectural design, something like applique, something like this, 0.27. And foliage, I use 0.27 for all my foliage. And for ruffles or something more like uh, fabric-like or in place of using gum paste or fondant, 0 0.16. Um, do you only use a cut machine for vapor paper? Uh, is there a way of cross contamination? I only use my cutting machines for vapor paper and I make my own food safe mat, like cutting mats. I don't use those sticky cutting mats that come with the machine because I'm not sure that the glue they use is at least non toxic. It's not food safe, but it's at least non toxic. So for my cutting machines, I make my own cutting mats that are food safe. And that's uh, the tutorial we have inside our Vapor Paper Academy. So if you remember, there is a tutorial how to do that just to just to avoid all the issues with not using food safe materials. I find it therapeutic to cut my own petals. I love it too, it's just sometimes, especially if I'm talking to I, I call my mom once a week, so uh, two things I do when I talk to my mom on the phone, and I usually just like FaceTime her. I fold my laundry because I don't like folding my laundry, or I cut my beef for paper petals. So my mom always knows, she's like, uh, what's on your agenda for today? Are you going to cut your petals or are you going to fold your laundry? So these are two things that I entertain my mom with. So sometimes it's just, it, it actually doesn't take a lot of like brain power to cut your petals. We have templates for everything. I have I have just like only a little piece of template. I have about like at least a few dozens of different templates for wafer paper flowers, free templates on my website. And for all the fancy flowers or wedding flowers, we have all these templates inside our wafer paper academy. So you can just like download, print them and use them as many times as you wanted to. So it's just, it's easy to cut wafer paper with a pair of scissors. And for me, uh, rolling out a gum paste so thin that I enjoy the look of the flower, it just takes forever and you cannot do that sitting on your couch. You cannot roll your gum paste sitting on your couch or like talking to your mom. Usually you need to be in your kitchen, like you need to be on some sort of like working, working surface to cut it out. And then you need to be very efficient with your time when you're working with companies. If you're people, you can cut your paddles, put them in a bag. I cut my paddles like all the times. I have my kids here, so this is one of my kids. But basically, I cut my wafer paper. This is for large ranunculus. I cut my wafer paper petals and I keep them in little plastic bags, like for peonies or something. This, this is all of these are ranunculus. But basically, I cut my petals when I have time. And especially right now, it's a little bit slower and we are gearing up to towards the wedding season. I'll cut my petals, I'll put them in the bag, and then I will have them when I need them and um, hello from colombia where do you get 0 0.22 wafer paper 0 0.22 wafer paper is available on amazon and if you go to my profile here on instagram you'll find a link to my own amazon storefront or if you're watching on youtube or somewhere there will be a link in the comment section where to buy 0 0.22 but you can go go on amazon search 0 0.22 millimeters wafer paper by oasis supply and you'll find that that's the cheapest option and uh okay 
Okay, so my plan was to have these conversations every single Friday for our Big Fur Paper Friday entertainment, just something. And I'm going to go live here on Instagram every Friday, 11 a.m. New York time or Eastern Standard time and talk about Vapor Paper and all the different ways to use Vapor Paper and how to start with Vapor Paper if you never worked with Vapor Paper. So if you are just joining us and this is your first week and you never worked with Vapor Paper, go on Amazon or your local uh, cake supplier store and buy any Vapor Paper, single thickness Vapor Paper you can get your hands on. Next week we are going to talk about all the ways you can condition your wafer paper and all the ways you can color your wafer paper so then you'll have something and how to play this. And the third week we are going to talk about making wedding flowers like this using wafer paper and then we will build our skills on that. We are going to talk about making different types of foliage and all the different things you wanted to learn how to make with the wafer paper. So, Go on Amazon or somewhere else. I'm not affiliated, so I'm only giving you suggestions of things I actually use. And um, buy any type of single thickness wafer paper from 0.22 to 0.40, and we'll play with that next week. A few more questions. Is zero grade wafer paper is the same as 22? Yes, zero. Uh, uh, so no, zero point zero grade wafer paper is 0.22. Uh, 0.27 to 0.40 it's either 8 degree premium and what else and the other other name for that I think it's 0 8 degree or premium so look for 0.22 it should be zero grade wafer paper if you're buying from Oasis supply zero grade is 0.22 if you bought from any other different grades make sure that it says 0.22 millimeters because it actually makes a difference when you're making a lot of flowers when you're making just one flower it doesn't matter if you're making like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of flowers like I do in my life I make a lot of paper paper flowers I can tell the difference and um, inside our wafer paper academy for all the like fancy flowers we prefer to use 0.22 just because it makes uh, you work faster because you only need to condition one side but any wafer paper you can get your hands on I can teach you how to use that thank you so much for joining us today and setting alarms for the next uh, week for another edition for our V for People Friday and let me know if you love these conversations and let's make 2024 is the year of V for People and if you're not on my email list I send these emails every Tuesday in early in the morning every Tuesday we I send you information all the templates and how to work with V for People and then we talk live here on Instagram so join me next Friday for the next, we have five more weeks for our V for Paper Fridays. And next week, we are going to talk about all the ways you can color V for Paper and condition your V for Paper. My name is Chef Anna from Floria Cakes. Thank you so much for joining me and subscribe, 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 so you won't miss the next week's conversation. Have a good day.